All right, everybody's talking about LeBron James' tweets about the NBA having all these injuries in the playoffs, especially to all-star caliber players, uh, and it being because of the shortened offseason. What are my thoughts? Well, look, like everybody, I hate that so many stars are injured in this offseason, and it definitely is affecting the playoffs. Uh, Nikola Jokic is a worthy MVP, but injuries impacted the MVP vote. James Harden, Nicole, um, Joel Embiid, LeBron James, Kevin Durant. Those are just a few players that would have been in the running for MVP had they not gotten injured in the regular season. And injuries also are impacting the playoffs and who's going to be the eventual champion. That said, I got to start here. The playoffs have been terrific. I mean, I miss all the stars that are hurt, but my goodness, the excitement is still there. Atlanta rallying against Philadelphia. Uh, the Clippers rallying to upset uh, Utah without Kawhi Leonard. The games are still incredibly exciting, and I'm enjoying the playoffs as much as I just about ever do. So uh, you've also had a lot of young stars emerge and put themselves on the map, and we're going to be paying more attention to them now going forward. Trey Young, Donovan Mitchell, uh, Devin Booker. So I still think the playoffs are great. But let me address, do I agree with LeBron that the shortened offseason has had a huge impact on these injuries? I think that has to, I guess, be part of it. Um, But it's not the whole story, and it's not as black and white as just saying that is the reason all these guys are injured. Because when we look at a lot of the guys that are injured, they're usually injured. Or the shortened offseason had nothing to do with it. Kyrie Irving out with the ankle injury. Kyrie Irving played 20 games last year. Kyrie Irving wasn't in the bubble. So that had his injury had nothing to do with the shortened offseason. Kevin Durant wasn't in the bubble. Only played 35 games this season. Missed all of last season. So his injury had nothing to do with it. Um, Mike Conley, Mike Conley played more games this regular season than he did last year. You know, we played 47, I believe last year, 51 this year, and he hasn't played more than 70 games, but once in the past six years. All right. So Mike, he played 12 games a few years ago in an entire season. So Mike Conley's been injured. Um, Anthony Davis has been banged up here and there. LeBron, you know, his first season in L.A. three years ago, he had the groin injury. So a lot of these injuries aren't just due to the shortened offseason. Maybe it's James Harden, who he was an Iron Man in Houston. Maybe. Um, but for the most part, that's not the only explanation. Uh, and let's stay there, though. If shortened offseasons are a problem and you need more rest during the offseason, then why are we still sending our NBA players to the Olympics? All right, Team USA. I get it when we started sending them several years ago, uh, and then the stars started going again after a little hiatus when we were getting beaten by these uh, other countries, and we wanted to reestablish our supremacy. That's fine, but we've done that. We've reestablished it, and even if we lost with some of our younger players, what's the big deal? So I say still start sending college players again or college-aged players, so maybe 23 and under or 22 and under. So a lot of the college age guys who are in the NBA at 20 years old, 21, 22, they still could go play in the Olympics. They're younger. They may not as need as much rest in the off season. But if, if shortened off seasons are a problem, I mean, we've been sending guys to the Olympics for years now and, and playing in the summer, highly competitive basketball. Now even Dame Lillard, Draymond Green, and others are going to play in Tokyo this year. And so we got to be honest about this. It's, this is not just the shortened off seasons. But I do think this, players need to rest in the summer. Um, years ago, you know, the 80s, the 90s, guys would take, legitimately take the summers off. Some guys wouldn't touch a basketball for a month or so, or even maybe a little bit longer. And you obviously want to stay on some level of shape in the off season. But you, do you need to stay at 
100% peak condition? Probably not. You need to give your body a rest and then use that training camp to get yourself in game condition. That's what guys used to do, and you didn't see, I don't believe, you saw quite as many injuries. So I think guys need to rest more in the offseason. Or if you're going to do activities and, and be uh, involved in conditioning and training, make a lot of it non-basketball related. So you work other muscles and give, you know, work that that will help you uh, if you're working your other muscles and giving some of your basketball muscles a break. So I think that's something that they need to look at. Also, I think that, look, I, I know the NBA will never do it, but I'm going to throw it out there. Because if you can fill an arena for 82 games, then you're going to do it because everybody wants that money. But I think uh, I really would like the NBA. I think it should go to a 60 to 65 game season. And let me not just focus on the NBA in that. Baseball, we don't need 162 games anymore. We don't. Money-wise, yeah. But for, for excitement, interest, go to 90 to 100. I love that. All right. Uh, it's a different world. The attention spans are shorter. There's more options for people to watch. Um, I, I don't. I mean, I think there'd be more excitement if there were fewer regular season games, and the sense of urgency in each game would rise. Now, I know you want 82 game money, so you don't want to shorten the season to 65 games. Although guys want to really only want to play that much, and the science is telling them you don't need to play 82 games anymore. Um, you can't play 82 games anymore. That's what a lot of the science is saying. So if that's the case, then go ahead and shorten the season, get rid of low management, get rid of back-to-backs, and just spread out the year a little bit, and maybe guys will be healthier. And Mark Cuban addressed this a few years ago, made a good point. You could eventually raise the ticket prices if you only play 60 games or 65 games because every game has a greater sense of urgency. Every game means more. And so you raise the ticket prices, and that's how you kind of make up for the lost gate of 82 games. TV money, you know, you got to convince them to pay the same amount for a fewer, lesser games. But, you know, I don't know that the NBA would ever do that. I don't think they would. But I'm just throwing it out there because I don't want low management. It's not fair to the fans who may only get to go see one game a year, and now their star that they wanted to see and saved up hundreds of dollars to go see isn't even playing. So we can't keep promoting low management. If the players can't play 82 games, then cut it to whatever the science says they can really play. Uh, and I think that might even help in the playoffs. So those are my thoughts. I know that's complex, but it's a complex situation and a complex uh, discussion but that's where I am on the injury front with the NBA players.